Goose, we're in his jet wash. Goose, Goose, flame out, flame out, engines are out. Flat spin, flat spin, eject, Goose, Goose, eject, Goose! What are you doing in here? Roswell Flight Test Crew here today with our friend Brett Hayes who's built this amazing cockpit ground station. It's a little pod on a trailer and you sit in it, it's got this giant TV screen so it's like you're flying. Well, let's check it out. All right. So Brett, first of all, what is it like to fly inside this thing? It's not like flying a real airplane and it's not like flying a model airplane. You have to train these great big muscles to fly a little tiny model uh, with conventional controls. And you still, you know, use the booger fingers on the stick and stuff. And the, the rudder uh, for me was the hardest because I got these great big legs. The first time I flew a quad, I was yawing all over the place. I mean, doing complete 360s and not meaning to and then doing them the other way. And, and then well, with, oh, what's the ahead. sensation? I mean, you've got that huge screen in front of you. Well, yeah, with the hood closed, and the door closed behind you, it's black. Um, I have uh, lights in here that simulate daylight. <laughs> so it, it feels like there's light shining in on the cockpit, uh, but you're in inside this room. When you are going 90 miles an hour, three feet off the ground with a, a Z2 or a Z3 or something, uh, it is a rush. There is a sensation, your brain tells you you're banked and you feel like you're, you're gonna fall <laughs> against the cockpit. Uh, even when in pictures of it with the screen at a tilt, it looks like the camera's tilted, or the camera straight and the whole cockpit's tilted. It's very, it's a very strange sensation. Now, how long did it take you to build this thing? Oh, you know, it's not done yet. So I, oh. I'll, t I'll let you know when I'm done. Uh, you how know, long has it taken you to get it to this point? And by the way, it's a pretty impressive point you've gotten it Well, to. thank you, I appreciate it. It's, it's been about a three year journey so far. Um, and like I said, uh, I've got more plans for it still. You know, I'd like to put, I know it sounds stupid. I'd like to put, make it so it has some motion to it, you know, gives you a little <laughs> sensation. I don't know. Uh, that and, uh, you know, uh, different uh, different visuals, maybe two camera visual with, so you have more of a surround. Now, what did it cost to build this thing? And I'm sure mm. 8 million hours, but uh, I'm thinking I, hardware here. Maybe $3,000, maybe a little less. Where did you get the idea for this thing? When I was a kid and I started flying model airplanes, like every person in the world that flies a model airplane, I'm sure, has thought, oh, it'd be cool to have real aircraft controls to fly this plane. My time and money and opportunity all caught up with me. So I took this childhood dream and I put it together. Um, and like I said, I, I share this dream with every modeler out there. And I just uh, took the technology that was available and made it, made it a reality, I guess. Was, well, so what tips would you give to somebody who wanted to build their own? My biggest tip is start simple. Take a radio and take a joystick system and know that they're never gonna be a standard radio and a standard joystick anymore and just hack them. Uh, start simple like that. That's what I did. I built a joystick system and then I built all this around it. And, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it, I, here I am, and I'm sitting with you. <laughs> well, I know Techenstein's got some questions about the details of how you put this together, so let me get him in here so okay. you and he can talk all that stuff, all right? So I was able to shoehorn myself into this contraption, and it's pretty awesome being in here with all the buttons and switches engage everywhere. This is, this is really neat. So can you give me a quick demo of this stuff? This is awesome. I actually got it in this thing, and it's, it feels, well, you said it's a little tight for me, but like an airplane. <laughs> So I love red switches. So what's this one do here? The APU. I, I flip that. What happens? Well, right now it would turn off. But what oh. it was designed to do, that was an early design. If you flip that up, it deactivates the uh, main battery uh, and will activate a backup battery. Uh, one thing I noticed is there's, I don't see any power cords to this thing. So how is it powered? It's powered up here, including the big screen. All self-contained, powered off a 12 volt uh, RV type battery. That 12 volt battery powers an inverter that powers the main screen of the TV. And then uh, it also powers a 12 volt bus that all the instruments in uh, the backup screen and the radio and all um, operate off of. About how long does that battery last? Carl? About six hours, I found. So what does this uh, right here do for us here? This is all my power system, so I can monitor the power. When I turn the master switch on, um, the 12 volt battery that powers the whole system also powers an inverter that, uh, which controls the television. This, this gauge is simply my monitor's power output. Okay. And this is the power that's on the main bus. And this is moving, so this is live also. That is a timer, yes. That keeps track of how many hours that the uh, system's been on. 
So this to me looks like a DVR. You have a DVR just in right there. You yeah, that's yeah, it's a DVR, and it's got the on-off switches. This is for the DVR. This is for the video splitter that's behind the panels here. The panel lights are in when they're in bright white. It kind of simulates daylight in the cockpit. So this isn't the compass. What is it? Actually, it was a compass. It this isn't. These are all actual aircraft instruments. This, uh, I basically just took apart and put a cheap Walmart Clockworks <laughs> in it. So now it's just a clock. Uh, it needs a battery. It's not it, running. It looks great. Oh, so thanks. <laughs> so this looks like a like a computer joystick. Actually, it says uh, SciTech right there. It is. It's been hacked, but yes. And all the buttons here, uh, they all operate. Like yes, that. yes, they uh, all operate. The uh, thumb switch there, the channel on the radio. The hat switches work as trim switches. That's a three position switch there. Um, all the other uh, blue buttons, fire missiles, or whatever you got on your plane, but they uh, they are mappable. So, artificial horizon here. Uh, what does that do for us? Well, sir, it's all servo driven. These are standard instruments I bought off eBay. Uh, added my own servos, and then I wired them into the joystick and the throttle. Oh. So the manifold pressure here, I see. I was playing with it earlier. It goes up and down with the throttle, which is really cool. So yes. You can tell your throttle position immediately. That's kind of neat. Yeah, that's probably the most useful of the instruments in the cockpit. This is landing gear. Is this is this real? Is this just a, a decoration, or is it actually? It thing? is actually. It is actually wired in to channel five, like most standard transmitters. And, and then next to it is the flap switch. Flap switch. And okay. it's just a slider switch, and yep. it actually is wired into a channel also. And then uh, the red button next to it is uh, another channel. And of course, they're all through the 9XR radio that I've hacked and, and using this now. This is the radio uh, system. This is back, basically the back of the transmitter uh, redesigned and hacked to fit in and look like an aircraft panel. But uh, it uses any JR module. So here we have the throttle, the dual independent throttle. That's, that's awesome. I just love playing with this to watch that little needle move. That's great. <laughs> so the, the hat switch to the side here, when I click it, it beeps. What, what is that doing for that, me? That scroll that's through your menu and stuff great. on the radio. Yeah, I wired all that in. That is awesome. I'm, the, I'm watching the menu here. This is great. And then the switches on the front underneath your pointer finger there are for the uh, exit and uh, um, okay. menu select. And then the hat switch right below that one is the throttle <laughs> and rudder trim. This is the display from the radio you put inside this gauge. That is awesome. Yeah. Because at first glance, you can't tell what it is. Well, it uh, it's actually just the motherboard out of a 9XR. It's normally held in with screws, but I've removed the screws. And this is the 9XR radio hacked. This is the motherboard of the 9XR. The cables that come off the 9XR are on these white plugs here. And these white plugs were the ones that went to the stock uh, joysticks. And then I extended these cables and they come up and around to this bus system on top. So they all come in from the outside. And then the uh, cables from the throttle and the joystick and the, the gear switch and such, they come in, in here and then just go to the backs of the bus to the corresponding control on the motherboard. And we've got a flight management system in there? It's just Droid Planner. I use it mostly for a moving map display. It's absolutely great for situational awareness. All right, we're going to close you up, Brian. Watch your fingers and toes. Thank you so much for showing us your CGS. That thing is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for making the trip, we've got a Roswell Flight Desk Group shoulder patch for you. That's awesome. You <laughs> makes the trip all worth it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe. Okay. I want my close up. Can I get this? Okay. <laughs> so I'm talking too much, aren't I? Um, no, it's not no, about just, you. Just it's about it. me. Yeah. It's not, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Boy, I've heard that and it was always me. <laughs> <laughs>